Hello and a very warm welcome to you all. The people that you will see on stage are people living with dementia and also their caregivers. But to tell you how we got here, I'll have to go back to the very beginning. When I formed the first choir in Singapore that included those living with dementia. Hello, welcome, welcome. We're working towards a concert at the end of this period. So I re I'm expecting very high standards from all of you, eh? One in 10 Singaporeans above 60 now live with this debilitating condition. Do you know what are you here today for? Here, mm. today, I remember Gravy and now she's again lost again. There is no cure to dementia. But science is proving that one instrument can make a difference. The human voice. Medicine can only slow the progression. But coercing can help to improve concentration, memory, psychological well-being. Can music help where modern science is faltering? I'm Jason Lai, principal conductor of the Yong Sil To Conservatory Orchestra. I've conducted professional musicians around the world. Great. And one, two. But this time, I'm working with a group of amateurs. I have this Herculean task ahead of me to try and get this group of people to sing at a concert. Oh, Thorns oh. infest the ground. Infest. The ground. So we really have to sustain. Winter, snow, and sleep. So can you practice it like this? To find out how music can slow down the cognitive decline of one of the most threatening diseases to an aging population. Joy to the world. Real joy, 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 joy! you might have heard about the Mozart effect. Coined in 1991, it's the idea that listening to Mozart makes children more intelligent. Turns out, it's not entirely a load of quack. Listening to classical music doesn't make you any smarter, but recent studies have discovered that musical training has an impact on the brain. Scientists have found that those with intense musical training, like me, have younger brains. That's because we have stronger neural connections. Think of them as a network within the brain that controls our sensory, motor and cognitive abilities. And apparently, to harness the power of music on the brain, all you really need is a body of people. And a voice. That's what Dr Fung Lei discovered when he formed a dementia prevention research choir back in 2015. His research is part of an ongoing study that aims to prevent and alleviate symptoms of depression and dementia. Listening to music is passive, but chorusing, you need to harmonize with your group. You need to know when to sing, right, your part. And you need to coordinate with your director, with your choir members. Yeah, so, so it's a kind of a very complex uh, cognitive activities. Was your study the first of its kind? Yes, this is the very first study in the world, you know, uh, how we use music to prevent dementia. Why focus on dementia and music making? The people living with dementia will lose function, lose memory, become 
disabled. So we don't have enough intervention available. The medicine can only slow the progression. But Corsin is like uh, something like exercise, you know, it's a workout with the medicine together with the corsin or other you know, intellectual activities. Uh, I think uh, the outcome of the people living with dementia will be optimized. So how much of an impact can choral singing have on someone living with dementia? Based on the results we have, uh, I would say uh, choral singing can help to improve concentration, memory, and uh, also something called information pressing speed. So if uh, you have dementia, you uh, take your medicine, but on top of that, you have your brain work out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In UK and US, there are performance choirs that include members living with dementia. So why shouldn't we start one here? So I'm putting together the first ever Singapore choir that includes people living with dementia. Hello. Welcome, welcome. To help me tell them apart from their loved ones, I've given them colour-coded name tags. Blue for those living with dementia and red for their caregivers. Esther, so we're going to have some fun singing today. Oh, yeah, so hopefully so. you like singing, right? I like singing, yeah. yeah. Great. How old are you? I'm 77. 77. 77. Yeah. Great, it's still going strong. Oh. <laughs> to be frank, some of them in the room, to me, didn't look like they have dementia. Hello. Until Jacqueline arrived. Hi, welcome. Hi. <laughs> hi, hi, I'm Jason. Pleased to meet you. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. So what's your name? I'm Shami. Hi, Shami. Hi. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl, hi, nice hi. To you. hi. Hi, hi. You like singing? Mm. Hey, great. I can't wait to hear your voice. Visibly, she's probably the most delicate out of the out of the choir. This was twenty years. Right. And how how has it affected you? Grumpy. Are you? You don't seem grumpy today. Or low self esteem. Being laughed at. Oh, okay. But no one here is laughing at you. <laughs> And I remember when I heard that, my kind of my heart broke. I haven't really considered how dementia could affect them as as people. I mean, their memories, yes. It kind of never dawned on me what it was like from their perspective. How are they feeling if people are watching them or looking at them or judging them or being impatient with them? For me, music is my source of joy, my source of life. And I really want you to share that with all of us. And so I, I hope that by meeting together each week and singing together, that there'll be this real sense of energy in the room and that you'll, you'll just leave just feeling really, really happy and wanting to, to sing even more. Because I know that we're working towards a concert at the end of this period. So I re I'm expecting very high standards from all of you. Right? <laughs> and uh, let's have some fun. But it's not all song and dance. I do want this to have a real impact on my choir members. So, I'm putting my choir members through a battery of tests that measure their level of cognitive function and emotional state of mind. So, I'll be asking you some questions. Do you know what are you here today for? Here, mm. today. It told me that, but I cannot okay. Dementia is a broad term that describes the loss of ability to think, remember and reason to the extent it interferes with daily life. Do you know, just now you took leave, which floor are you in right now? We took leave, which floor? Mm. I remember clearly, and now it's again lost again. Can you draw this for me? 
While memory loss is a common symptom, there are at least 10 types of dementia that affect different parts of the brain that control emotion, behavior, and even movement. Can you copy this design? Okay. You slowly and try to do it, okay? Mm, okay. To find out whether music can make a measurable difference to their lives, we'll be repeating these tests three months later. What are the three items? Both, black, three. Very good. Remember these three items, huh? I will ask you again later on. Okay. I want to see if singing helps jog their memories and see how singing can actually affect us, can help slow down this cognitive decline. What do you like to sing? I, I, I like to sing the, the old, song. old melody song. Like the old Cantonese song, the Chinese? No, no, no the English, English song. song. Which one? Uh? Which one? I like the unchanged melody. Oh, I see. Go on, sing for me now. Sing for me. Oh, my love, my darling. <laughs> and just as he was getting to the best part, Is, oh no! It's okay, Quinn. You stay here. We'll go and search for him. One of my choir members goes missing. Who? Who? who who's missing? Stephen. Yeah. I formed the first choir in Singapore that includes individuals living with dementia. I'm really excited to be here with you and I'm really excited to hear you sing and uh, let's have some fun. But before my choir rehearsal has even begun, I'm getting my first glimpse into the realities of living with dementia. Oh no, who, 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 who's missing? Huh? Stephen? Yeah. So there was a break and so people could go off to the toilets Stephen's wife, Lai Quen, didn't know his whereabouts. He was really anxious, and so we were also suddenly got very panicked. Can we okay. Sure all the stay with it's us. okay, Quen. You stay here. We're going to search for him. And uh, we're going to try and find him. Hello. Are you in there? Who, who is this? Stephen? OK, we'll just wait here for you, OK? OK. And so we eventually found him with a minder. <laughs> and they were quite chilled about it, but we were, we were the ones panicking. But it really showed me, demonstrated to me, that in the outside world, people with this condition can, can go missing and they can really seriously disappear and we don't know where they are. <sighs> we... We managed to find him. There's a member production team with him. So is this situation typical of someone living with dementia? Yes, it is a typical concern uh, when we are in the shopping mall. And typically, Stephen walks slower than myself. Even then, when I walk and if I'm going to turn a corner, I would actually stay at a corner to make sure that he can see me. And then when I turn, he will be able to, he will turn. If I turn many turns, he wouldn't be able to find me. <laughs> you want to sit down and you want to get a seat? With everyone finally present, it's time to get started. You go, Stephen. You okay? We found you. We thought you went missing. <laughs> From who? From who? I'm excited to hear my choir's vocal capabilities for the first time. And because I have no experience teaching those living with dementia, I've brought in someone with the know-how. Because once you hold the book, you want to read all the words, right? <laughs> okay, give me a... Okay. Uh, Jacqueline. 
Good job, Peter. Yeah. Hey, go up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Free bus, can? Okay. Okay. Okay, the original was fine. Peter. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Esther. Me? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Louder is the game. Just trying to keep pitch, or even trying to sing a phrase, even just just making sounds with their voice, they were finding quite difficult. Ha ha ha! I have big dreams for this motley crew, so I've arranged for a Christmas performance at Singapore's busiest shopping street. I don't know if I've bitten off more than I can chew, because it's less than three months away. Ha! 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 Wow! Wow! <laughs> Lion's roar. <laughs> it suddenly hit me in that moment. I have this Herculean task ahead of me to try and get these, this group of people to sing in a concert in a few weeks' time. Uh, we're going to sit for this song. Good. Can I... Because dementia disrupts the brain's ability to form and retain new memories, for starters, Angie has chosen some old favourites that they might be able to easily recall. Thank you, class. <laughs> Thank you for class. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. I love you. I love you. We have more songs to teach, right? We have Jason. And more adventures. And I've, I've got a terrible voice, but I, I, you inspire me all to sing. All right, see you soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you next week, right? Okay. See you. I was worried when I met Jacqueline about how she would be able to cope. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> seeing Jackie in a wheelchair and seeing her struggle physically uh, with singing, I wanted to know more about the condition she had. Hey, guys. How did you find the singing, Jacqueline? I saw you really, really singing in the middle. Did you enjoy yourself? Mm. What did you like about this session? The camaraderie among the members. Yeah, exactly, the camaraderie. I felt there was such a group feeling and everyone was supporting each other. Mama? I wonder if she's tired. Mama? <laughs> I'm so boring, is it? I'm so boring. I've, I've made you fall asleep. Yeah, so she's she, listening. She Don't is. you say anything bad about her. I won't, so I promise. <laughs> yeah. It's cheeky. Yeah. See, cheeky. She's very witty still, though. Uh, she has days where she comes up with one-liners that just flaws blow, yeah, flaws all of us. We started um, on Facebook anecdotes with mom hashtag. What I tell people is, you know, you know our internet is very fast, right? 3G, 4G, then 5G. Mom's still on dial up. So wait for the then the answer will come. <laughs> the connective part of it was um, pretty much quite good still. Yeah, it's really much more the physical aspect, which is something that people don't really think about. Can you the brain? Okay. Jacqueline's condition is complicated. Her doctors suspect that she has either autoimmune dementia or dementia with Lewy bodies. They are both uncommon forms of dementia. 
Yeah, so it's not like the regular dementias where you can see the people getting lost. You wouldn't find her losing her way because she's here. Good, go, go, go. They're both green now. Go, Mama, go. Green, green, green. Go, 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 go. Good job. Yeah. Can you tell me what you call this place again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the chamber. Even though she has dementia, she's still witty, she's still mum. Mama! <laughs> she hasn't lost that character. It's still there. It yeah. still exists, doesn't yeah. it? It's more obvious physically because the you know their inability to walk. There are times as well where uh, when you ask her to, for example, mum, lift up your hands or whatever it is, she'll tell you. I'm doing it. So I think it's here. Like, she hears it's you. It's not translating. It's not translating down to the body. But no two persons living with dementia will be the same. I mean, you met a room of people just now with living with dementia. It's so different. A myriad of, so like... different. So for people living with dementia, we don't know what's going on inside of them. We can only see the physical, the out outside parts. That's why today, I'm immersing myself into the world of Auntie Lucy. She's a character in a VR simulation by Dementia Singapore that offers users a glimpse into the mind of someone living with dementia. Where is my first? I immediately recognize the most common symptom of dementia, memory loss. Where are the keys? But I wasn't prepared for the symptoms that followed. That was, um, that was really quite stressful. This is me on a regular day. But today, I'm out of the rehearsal room. I'm in a room. And inside the head of Auntie Lucy. She's a VR character who lives with dementia. Opening the wardrobe now. So I'm still looking for my purse. Where's my purse? I can hear a heartbeat, and the heart beats faster. I felt like there was some stress then. Ah, I can go to the market now. There's a lot of brightness. There's been a lot of noise. It's very heightened. It's sensory overload. And they are pretty sensitive with all this, so they will pick up uh, much than out as a normal person. I want to go out. And there's a lot of confusion about where where I am, well, what I'm doing. Maybe the keys are in the kitchen. So sometimes they may see things which is we really consider as a hallucination. They may mistaken the rod as a dark hole. As a result, they will avoid of walking across the hole. For fear of falling in? Yes, that's right. Oh. You can see all the insects in the kitchens as well. What's this? Go away. You don't see these things. But in the mind of persons with dementia, the person may actually see all this and feel frightened and refuse to walk to that space or even enter the room for that matter. So these are some of the symptoms that a public may not see or may not know unless uh, you're being educated about the condition. And then you will then understand why the person is behaving in this way. Where is my person? Wow, 
not so happy. Oh, that, I have to say, that was really quite intense. The case of sensory overload, hearing the, the loud noises from outside, the bright lights, being scolded, and then hearing this, this heartbeat racing. There was a lot of, I felt very stressed uh, to be in Auntie Lucy's shoes. So the symptoms or the signs that you experience in the video, uh, it is quite comprehensive across all types of dementia. However, there are still differences from one type to another type. So when we say dementia, it's actually an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. right? So there are many types of dementia. Uh, the most common one is Alzheimer's disease. Then uh, the next more common one will be uh, vascular dementia. And then, of course, there are also Lewy body and other types of dementia that comes from uh, various types of sickness. And, and this is um, early stage dementia from a perspective of someone who has early stage dementia? Generally. Well, they can be in a stage of mild to moderate. To moderate. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any simulations for late stage, or is that is that a very different kind of. Uh, it, is, it is it is completely different. Completely different. Yes. But this condition is progressive. So yeah. when they reach the late stage, most of the time they will have lost most of their abilities, right. and some of them could be very irritant. Mm. Hello, Uncle Peter. How are you? How are you? There you go. Look. Okay. I'm now even more determined to fire up the brains of my choir at our second rehearsal. Yeah, Looking sure. forward to hearing your voice today, Stephen. It was really wonderful in the last session to hear you sing. And uh, this session I want even greater volume, greater intensity, greater passion, and all that wonderful energy that you give to the room. Welcome back, welcome back. Happy -o. Happy -o. Back with us is Angie, a vocal coach who has experience teaching those living with dementia. <laughs> Today, we'll be introducing our choir to what's called a cannon. Guys, we'll start first. Okay. We'll be in a cannon, so they go one, two, then we start one, two. Now, a cannon is where you sing a melody, and sometime after it, someone else comes in with the same melody. So you have to keep listening to your melody and listening to the other melody so you fit in. Ready? Ready? And one, two, three... Singing together is really all about listening. Apart from using your voice, you've got to pay attention to one another to keep in time and stay in tune. It's an activity that stimulates different parts of the brain. Group one, so you better watch out, you better watch out, you better not cry. Now everybody else will listen. Two, three. You better watch out, you better not cry. You better not child, I'm telling you why. You better not child, you better not cry. You better not child, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. He's making it twice. So we had a break and we wandered in to have some food and some drink and we sat down and have a conversation uh, with these three and I was so shocked about what I heard. What age did you did it? Fifty plus. Fifty plus. Uh, I was hit about sixty. I'm sixty-two now. Sixty-two. Uh, I was in my late fifties. Late fifties as well. Uh, I always associate dementia with with people in their seventies and their eighties. But I know. But... Well, you're wrong. Yes. This sort of thing, uh, nobody wants to mention it openly. Well, why is that? 
different family got different conception. Yes. Uh, some people feel shameful. Yes. See, most of us, we don't even know that we got yeah, dementia yeah. until certain time that someone says, hey, you're very forgetful, you know? Was that a real shock? I mean, no, initially my wife uh, reacted badly. La. I mean, every, suddenly uh, your husband uh, got dementia, everybody will be shocked. Right. It's not the end of the world. It's just something that's holding me back a little. So We all have our own challenges, yeah. but we all find ways as we cry. It's better to cry on somebody's shoulder than yeah. keep it in our I agree with you, absolutely. Almost half of the group had early onset dementia and it was so shocking for me because for instance i'm two years off 50 it could happen to me so i'm at the dementia research center to find out why we seem to be getting dementia at a younger age what's the youngest you've ever seen 46 years so when i first started my clinical service about 17 18 years ago we used to see about two or three patients with uh, young onset dementia uh, in a week but over the last one to two years, we are seeing about 15 to 20 patients a week, right? So that definitely shows a clear increase in this trend. Uh, what is causing this trend, yes. right? I suppose one could be just the awareness. People are more sensitized and they come early. The other thing that we are more concerned about is are there biological factors uh, among Asians that's causing this increasing trend? One of those biological factors is this, white matter disease. It happens when blood vessels in the brain get narrowed, reducing blood supply. Over time, the brain cells and the connections between them die off. It's a condition that's been linked to our genetics, diet and lifestyle. White matter disease is closely related to conditions such as hypertension. So when the prevalence of hypertension goes up, white matter disease goes up, and you have more people with young onset dementia. So I'm... 48, mm -hmm. do I need to be worried? Do you have any other uh, medical conditions, hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol? I think my, my last check was that my cholesterol was on the high side. Mm. Is there a family history of dementia? No. How about stress and sleep? So I, I have quite a stressful job. Mm. Sleep-wise, about six, seven hours right. I get. Right. How much of exercise do you do on a weekly basis? Not enough. We'll need to, need to put you through the entire assessment to know your exact risk. Now I'm getting a little worried for myself. Any family history of dementia? No. Any family history of other chronic I want to find out whether I'm at risk of developing dementia. So I'm enrolling in a study that will give me answers. It includes an MRI scan that will detect any anomalies in my brain. So this gives us an idea of what his grey matter looks like, what his white matter looks like. We're trying to see if there are any sort of major regions of brain loss. Now I'm going to um, say a list of 15 words to you. When I'm finished, I want you to recite back to me as many as you can. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay. Drum, curtain, bell, coffee. Moon, garden, turkey, house, river. Um and tests that measure my cognitive state. <laughs> I can't remember what I said before. This is not looking good. <laughs> OK, here's where I turn away. OK, you can turn away. Very good. <laughs> Next, I am getting an extensive evaluation of my physical health, because apart from genetics, lifestyle factors can also contribute to the onset of dementia. And no, I'm not going to let you know my weight. I have to say, I'm actually a bit nervous. Any news to tell me? One area that's a bit concerning is... Um, Gosh. This spot here. Oh. This. I know what's your age? I'm 48. So my youngest patient with a confirmed diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease was 46 years. Now I'm getting a little worried for myself. Days earlier, I enrolled in a study that will assess my risk of getting dementia. 
I can't remember the words I've said before. And today, I'm about to receive my results. I have to say, I'm actually a bit nervous. Your total cholesterol is high. Uh -huh. 5.9. Oh, dear. With the cutoff being 5.2. Wow. OK. Now, with that, let's move on to the MRI scan findings. This is my skull. This is my your brain. brain. One area that's a bit concerning is um, Gosh. this spot here. If you look at this spot... Oh! This... What I'm looking at is the presence of white matter disease in my brain. A specific type of white matter disease called periventricular white matter disease. Maybe related to your cholesterol levels. Oh, your that does not sound good. Now that you have a slightly elevated risk, how can you bring that risk down? Mm -hmm. Right, And that is where uh, exercise, diet, and having a regular check on your cholesterol levels, I think is going to be important. Right. If I don't do anything, what's going to happen? And this could grow to become a big lesion. Right. And similarly, they, you can have more lesions in other aspects of your brain. And that is what eventually causes dementia. Are there differences between young onset dementia and late onset dementia? And a specific type of behaviour that commonly presents in young onset dementia is what we call as disinhibited behaviour. Right, which means that you do things that are inappropriate. Right? Perhaps the way you behave with You do strangers. and say things. You do and say things. Okay. You may be going around hugging people that you never met before. Right. right? Or eating in a gluttonous way or becoming over-religious, for example. So those are some of the behavioural changes. They may be having trouble finding a specific word. Or they may be replacing one word with another word. They may want to say spoon, but they may end up saying knife. How patients progress over time also differs. In the younger onset patients, that has a more rapid decline. It's maybe just about two years before they progress to the moderate and severe stages. I immediately thought of Stephen, because he can be quite disruptive sometimes. Your turn, your turn, Stephen. Why my turn, not my wife's turn? <laughs> <laughs> I subcontracted already. <laughs> and he was diagnosed at just 57. And for those with young onset dementia, there's more of a rapid decline. Hey, how are you? Yes. Lovely to see you again. Yes. So where's Stephen today? Yeah, Stephen is in uh, the daycare centre at Jade Circle. And he goes there every day? Uh, we try to get, let him go every day. If you leave them at home, the decline would be very fast and very steep, which I actually saw in uh, many of our friends, our caregivers and their loved ones. He got it when he was quite young, yeah. 57, right? Right, yeah. So how does that affect him? He repeats himself. Right. Yeah. Uh, and the repetition is very short. Within a second, he probably will ask the same question. I notice in rehearsals, yeah. he's always making funny comments. He's He's chiming in yeah. uh, more than once, you know. Yes. Before dementia, he would actually know when to talk, when not to talk, or control a little, little bit. Yeah, but with the dementia, he would just air his view without control. And sometimes people don't understand, and they would then, uh, you know, be very upset with um, a person with dementia saying certain things, but actually they don't mean it. So it seems that Stephen's form of dementia kind of impacts his behaviour quite a bit. Yep. His uh, moods has changed to be more aggressive, uh, especially in the evening, sundowning uh, moods. So when it's uh, 5 to 7, these days, Stephen would have his sundown moods. Sundowning is a common symptom of dementia that can begin in the late afternoon and last into the night. It's a sudden worsening of confusion, agitation, and aggression. He gets angry, and suddenly he would flare and say something, and then he would actually call me and say he's very angry with this person, blah, blah, blah. And then five minutes later, he would call me again, it's another person, another thing again. So it sounds like a, a lot of work for you, and a lot of patience, a lot of compassion. What I see here is that it's not what he wants it to be, uh, he has come to this stage is, you know, um, for whatever reason, and um, understanding maybe perhaps what he's going through 
is even tougher than what I'm going through. Although it is really very hard, very unknown, uh, but I would actually take it very forward with a, a positive strike. Yeah. We have been married for 40 years. We met in the university, in the hostels. Graduated as an accountant. Mm. Then, luckily, I got a pretty wife. <laughs> My daughter did say this. You know, whenever you know she, she and her husband and I argue one another and all those. <laughs> My daughter would say, "Can't you be like my father to my mom? You know, because they actually saw how Stephen treats me. He will never scold me." Ask her to buy me one of these sports cars. Never come. <laughs> Still in Germany. Oh no, this one sports car can buy. But you cannot go in. The they seat, no have... space, you know. Sorry that you cannot sit together with me. <laughs> <laughs> now, with his dementia condition, he would actually bang the table. And that actually causes uh, stress on myself. Because I'm quite scared. With, uh, because Stephen has never done this before, you know, banging the table, banging the door. So suddenly, he gets upset. Yeah, it's kind of like he becomes a different person altogether. Yeah, although you know physically he's the same, but in mentally he is not the same person already. Stephen, can you read the Chinese words at the bottom or not? Papa the Sun Cheng Jing. You think my Chinese so bad? <laughs> Stephen has a combination of Alzheimer's and vascular dementia or what's called mixed dementia, a condition where a person has more than one type of dementia. It has a far more severe impact on the brain. Unfortunately, it's also the most common form of the disease in Asia. Who's this? No one's a name. You go on. You go on, you go on. Sarah. Sarah. So I think the first few years it was more stable and then gradually, you know. Yeah, I know. Like recently I think you would like call me and then I call you back. And then you're you're confused, right? You're saying making you have stories that are just are completely untrue, clearly. Um, so it's yeah. So yeah, it's quite sad. I mean, every time I come home, I'm sad. Mommy is so bright. So what, what Val says is that when he calls her, yeah, and then tells about about things that a certain situation, and and I get that every day. Yeah. So uh, instead of feeling that it is untrue, I kind of join in the story and act act act, act along, you know. Yeah, so that because it's no point when the story is not true, it's no point telling him it's not true. It's just because he feels that it's very true. Don't be surprised. If it's like that, it's like that. So I just recall the happy times that we have together. We really had a good time together. So, Stephen, how would you describe life for you? Oh, she's a loving wife. No lah, you must say something more lah. Describe something more. Huh? If I can, I publish a newspaper. Yeah, let's say some more lah. <laughs> well, Stephen likes to joke about pretty women and all those things, but in his heart and in his mind, he has only one wife. Yeah. Not twenty ah. <laughs> Not like that. No, I mean seriously ah. I'm very glad that she stay on with me. I got dementia. <laughs> We're just two months away from our Christmas concert. <laughs> 
I need to get my choir in singing shape. So one of the things that we're, we're facing now is that they're singing kind of from their throat, which doesn't really project very well. It still sounds like they're coming from here, because they push your belly against, la, 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 la. Try that, la, la, la. I find ways to help them remember the lyrics. When I have hand gestures, it helps me memorize the words. So I'm going to teach you some hand gestures today to go with um, Deck the Halls. Don't we now? A gay apparel. <laughs> and do something quite risky. Participants are going to be here with me, and then the caregivers, we're going to have some time with Evelyn. Jingle, jingle, jingle bells, jingle.